times will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to ms nehal shah from the investor relations team at tcs thank you and over to you thank you operator good evening and welcome everyone thank you for joining us today to discuss tcs's financial results for the fourth quarter and full year financial year 2024 that ended march 31 2024 this call is being webcast to our website and an archive including the transcript will be available on the site for the duration of this quarter the financial statements quarterly fact sheet and press releases are also available on our website our leadership team is present on this call to discuss our results we have with us today mr k kriti vasan chief executive officer and managing director hello everyone mr ng subramanyam chief operating officer and executive director good evening to you mr samir sakseria chief financial officer hello i am mr milin lakkar chief hr officer so hi everyone our management team will give a brief overview of the company's performance followed by a q and a session as you are aware we don't provide specific revenue or earnings guidance and anything said on this call which reflects our outlook for the future or which could be construed as a forward looking statement must be reviewed in conjunction with the risks that the company faces we have outlined this risk in the second slide of the quarterly fact sheet available on our website and emailed out to those who have subscribed on our mailing list with that i would like to turn the call over to kriti thank you nehal good day everyone i am pleased to share that uh, we are wrapping up the last quarter of financial year 2024 with the strongest sequential revenue growth in many quarters and all time high tcv and an operating margin of 26% for the quarter highest in the last 12 quarters our financial year 2024 revenue grew at 6.8% in rupee terms 3.4% in constant currency terms and 4.1% in dollar terms our operating margin for the year came in at 24.6% and net margin was at 19.3%. Our ability to maximize market opportunities is evident in our record Q4 TCV of $13.2 billion. We are seeing solid deal momentum across markets resulting in strong double digit growth in our last 12 months TCV which is a reflection of our deepening partnership with our clients. This is going to be NGS last quarter with all of us. I want to thank NGS with whom I have worked closely for more than 3 decades. I witnessed first hand the tremendous impact he has made on TCS over for a 42 year long career working side by side with him and our entire leadership team on every aspect of our strategy and operations. NGS played a key role in developing and executing our growth strategy especially our products and platform business positioning us very well for continued market leadership. He has played a strategic role in several landmark projects that TCS undertook across geographies, most recently in BSNL being one. We will miss him in his executive capacity very much. I now invite Samir Milan and NGS to go over different aspects of our performance during the quarter. I will step in later to provide more color on the demand trends we are seeing. Over to you, Samir. Thank you, Pradeep. Good day, everyone. In the fourth quarter of FY24, our revenue grew 2.2% year on year in constant currency terms at rupees 61237 crores this translates to a growth of 3.5% in rupee terms in dollar terms the revenue was 7.36 million a yoy growth of 2.3% for the full year our revenue grew 3.4% yoy in constant currency at rupees uh, 2 240,893 crores and that translates to a growth of 6.8% in rupee terms and in dollar terms revenue were at 29.1 billion dollars a yoy growth of 4.1% <coughs> operating margin stood at 26% a sequential expansion of 100 basis points this was in spite of 90 basis points due to higher third party costs and travel expenses offset by 190 basis points improvement from reduced subcontractor costs improved productivity and better utilization our fy24 operating margin was at 
an expansion of 50 basis points over the prior year. During the year, we had 250 basis points headwind on account of annual wage increases and other interventions, and a further 90 basis points on the, from higher third-party expenses and discretionary expenses. We were able to successfully mitigate those by optimizing subcontractor expenses, improving productivity, realization, and support from currency. Net margins in Q4 was 20.3%, and for the full year was 19.3%. Our annual EPS grew 10.9% during the year. Our effective tax rate for the year was 25.8%. Please note that uh, all the full year FY24 numbers are adjusted for the settlement of legal claim, which was accounted for in Q3. Our accounts receivable was at 67 days DSO in dollar terms, flat sequentially. Our cash conversion continues to be strong and over 100% of our net profits. Invested funds at the end of March stood at rupees 46,963 crores. The board has recommended a final dividend of rupees 28 per share. The shareholders' payout year till date were rupees 46,223 crores, including the buyback and dividends. Over to you, Milesh. <coughs> Thank you, Samir. Uh, our workforce at the end of the fourth quarter was 601,546. Our LTM attrition in IT services kept trending down throughout the year and was at 12.5% uh, at the end of Q4, down 80 basis points sequentially, and in our comfort range of 11 to 13%. This has been recognized as a global top employer. Uh, TCS has been recognized as a global top employer by the top employers and nine consecutive years. So global certification follows a series of localized certifications with TCS being named the top employer in 32 countries and regions. The company remains the preferred employer and one of the largest job creators in IT services in several major markets for both pressures and lateral hires. We have commenced pressure hiring from campuses and continue to recalibrate our lateral hiring, focusing more on utilizing the capacity that we have built over the prior years. TCA's organic talent development initiatives that continue to deliver industry leading outcomes. Employees logged 51 million learning hours during the year and acquired 5 million competence. In FY24, uh, several key initiatives were launched to uh, inculcate a strong engineering culture among the company's associates, build deeper skills in market-relevant technologies and create a, an AI-ready workforce. Uh, as we have done consistently every year, we have announced a salary increment for all of our employees with effects on April 1st, similar in quantum to prior years, with top performance receiving double EX. Over to you, NGS, for some color on our segments and production platforms. Thank you, Malin. Uh, good evening to all of you. As uh, Kriti mentioned, I'll be superannuating from TCS in a few weeks. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed, and it's been an absolute honor interacting with all of you over this forum. And I always have looked forward to your uh, reports and all our interactions and the reports have only made me better. <coughs> Thank you so much. Um, let me walk you through our segmental performance now. As a reminder, all growth numbers are numbers are in on year-on-year -year constant currency terms. In Q4, growth was led by regional markets, which grew 26%. Manufacturing vertical grew by 9.7%. Energy, resources, and utilities grew by 7.3%. Life sciences and healthcare <coughs> grew by 1.7%. Our consumer business group declined by 0.3%. However, it returned to positive sequential growth in Q4. Banking, financial services, and insurance declined by 3.2%, but saw a return of growth in the insurance business across all markets during the quarter. CMI declined by 5.5%, and technology and services declined by 5.6%. Among major markets, the United Kingdom led with 6.2% growth, Continental Europe declined by 2.2%. North America declined 2.3%. In emerging markets, India led with 38% growth. Middle East and Africa grew by 11%. Latin America grew by 10%. And Asia Pacific grew by 5.2%. Let me move on to our products and platforms. Our industry leading portfolio of products and platforms saw good traction during the quarter. Igneo, our cognitive automation software suite, saw 32 new deal wins and six go lives. T 
TCS Banks, our flagship product for financial services, had eight new wins and seven go lives during the quarter. Central Bank, a leading Midwest regional bank in North America, selected our core banking and payments modernization platform. The solution will come pre-integrated with core banking and payments, an ISO 2022 ready solution, enabling the bank to offer FedNow services and RTP tools by, by the clearinghouse. TCS Bank insurance platform continues to see strong growth in Q4 with two wins and two go lives during the quarter. Aviva, UK's leading insurance wealth and retirement provider, expanded on the existing relationship with TCS for a 15-year deal to transform its life business and enhance customer experience, leveraging the TCS Bank's digital platform. As part of this, the NPCN policy administration and servicing will expand to cover an additional 5.5 million policies to be managed by Diligenta, our FCA-regulated subsidiary in the UK. Quartz blockchain platform had three wins during this quarter. In life sciences, uh, advanced drug development platform had one new win and two go live during the quarter. Gen AI is a potential game changer in identifying probable drug candidates, optimizing trials, harnessing vast pools of dissimilar clinical data, capturing and processing efficacy and safety data. There are many such Gen AI use cases where pharma companies are investing. TCS plus ADD platform is actively working on POCs on Gen AI across multiple innovative use cases, including researcher insights, patient insights, safety case processing, and medical writing. TCS Optimera, our AI-powered merchandising optimization suite, had one new win in Q4. The Dutch retail client of ours has transformed its pricing strategies in the 800 Netherlands stores for the last seven years with TCS Optimera fulfilling their promise of providing high quality at low price. Our product will now drive their pricing initiatives in Belgium that will help them improve usability, provide flexibility in pricing, and help maintain consistent pricing position. TCS Ion, our platform for digital assessment, exam administration, and learning, had 22 new wins and 80 plus go lives. Our assessment platform administered examinations for 13.9 million candidates. Our platform now offers Gen AI powered content creation and text translation in Indian regional languages, improved security in question paper creation with restrictions in editing, overwriting media images, and creating duplicate subject codes and names, audio based marking with noise suppression and dual recording capabilities. TCS Twinx, our digital twin solution, had two wins and two go lives. Mastercraft and Jive won 29 new clients in Q4. <clears throat> Let me now go over the client metrics. As you are aware, our customer-centric business strategy enhances our ability to continually expand and deepen our client relationships. These metrics provide a measure of our progress in the journey and the validation of our strategy. In Q4, we added two more clients year on year in the $100 million plus band, bringing the total to 62. Six more clients in the $50 million plus band, bringing the total to 139. Ten more new clients in the $20 million plus, bringing the total to 301. 26 more clients in the $10 million band, bringing the total to 487. 28 more clients in the $5 million plus band, bringing the total to 693 and 53 more clients in the $1 million plus band, bringing the total to 1,294. I will now request to see to speak on demand drivers during the quarter. Thank you, NGS. As we review the last year's performance, TCS has once again proved its adaptability and relevance to customers. We are working closely with them and utilizing our contextual knowledge. We proactively identify solutions to their industry-specific challenges leading to significant deal wins and market share gains for us. Our growth remains resilient amidst macro uncertainties and geopolitical volatilities. During Q4, customers continue to reprioritize spend and project, where return on investment was high and immediate. Several key engage engagement themes, which are priorities for enterprises, include operating model transformation, 
vendor consolidation, cloud transformation, AI enablement, that is cloud and data foundation for AI, customer and employee experience enhancement, business process optimization, sustainability, and early stage AI infused transformational engagements. We continue to see pressure on customers' discretionary spend. At the same time, transformation also remains a key ask, and customers are expecting the same to be funded through savings from operations. For the BFSA vertical, 2023 was a year of resilience, balancing the challenges due to inflation and complex geopolitics against the initial benefits from rising interest rates. In 2024, while evolving regulation, transformating technologies like generative AI, cybersecurity, embedded finance, and green transition have become the constant driving change. Businesses are going to be focused on innovation, driving their plans, uh, the innovation driving their plans and building new business models for the future that will unravel tremendous growth potential. We continue to see pent up demand in BFS, which will, be growth, which will be a growth driver in the medium to long term. But in the near term, clients continue to conserve cash and focus on business critical projects with immediate return on investment. Challenges such as economic slowdown, soft recession, high interest rates, geopolitical tensions continue to put pressure on the consumer business group vertical through financial year 2024. However, we saw some green shoots and moderate growth during the quarter, which represented the highest sequential growth in the last four quarters. We expect accelerated spend in the medium term in areas such as improving customer experience, loyalty and reach, hyper personalization, scaling retail media network revenues, security services, cloud transformation, cloud ERP modernization, leveraging AI generative AI to enhance business terms. I'm going to talk in detail about some of the major themes driving demand for our services. We are witnessing a growing trend in deals enhancing customer and employee experience for enterprises and are actively pursuing such deals and taking proactive measures across industries. An American retailer of office supplies partnered with TCS to reimagine and digitally transform their loyalty program. The omni-channel platform is enabling the launch of new features like real-time reward point redemption, special savings events, and customized offers, and is key to improve customer retention and satisfaction. TCS leverages contextual knowledge to shape the cloud-based solution and deliver a highly scalable, flexible, reliable, and secure solution. TCS entered into a strategic partnership with a multinational energy management company to bring grid flexibility management and energy transition for global utilities and their end customer base. TCS will integrate clever energy into customers' energy management platform and together go to market for commercial, industrial, and residential end customers of global utility companies. The joint partnership will target a potential saving of around billion dollar energy bills for over 10 target utilities and their end industrial and commercial customers. It will generate a business value of 40 to 60 million for the customer over the next 10 years. The global supply chain is rapidly evolving and striving to stay abreast for the ever-changing environment and advancing technological innovations. Below are a few examples of how TCS is helping businesses in modernizing processes and platforms to enhance efficiency, adaptability to market shifts, and boost their bottom line. The Norwegian Postal Service Provider partnered with TCS to modernize its critical logistics management platform that was constraining its growth ambitions. TCS leverages deep contextual knowledge to implement a new digital core, a command center, improved workflows, real-time data visibility, and predictive analytics and insights. This has helped the client reduce operating costs by 40%, enable timely interventions, improve user experience, and reliability during peak periods. With an empowered workforce and faster time to market, the platform has fortified the company's position in the market. A distributor and retailer of beauty products was facing several challenges across the supply chain and specifically significant inefficiencies in purchase order management. TCS assessment found that over 50% of the POs contained errors and investigation was cumbersome. A control tower with an automated exception handling and shipment notification and streamlined vendor approvals was implemented. This reduced 
manual intervention in pivo processing by up to 90% significantly mitigating the risk of human error improving operations and vendor relations ESG has gained traction amongst organizations and is becoming a crucial investment the need for emissions reporting and regulatory compliance towards net zero commitment is driving new business of data collection and deriving insights sustainable financing has emerged as a top priority and is driving the transition towards a carbon neutral economy our clients actively seek our expertise to develop innovative technology driven solutions that leverage iot ai and advanced analytics aiming to reduce energy and resource consumption monitor and measure greenhouse gas emissions throughout the supply chain minimizing carbon footprint reducing waste promoting recycling and reporting the sustainability initiatives a nordic major partnered with tcs to enable esg credit risk assessment with varied degree of automation and complexity aligned to the sustainable financing approach for corporate customers with an efficient and harmonized approach this program improved ecb regulatory compliance covering four out of the six regulatory requirements our solution has flexibility to accommodate future regulatory requirements and supervisory expectations and enables a risk based approach to esg assessment and monitoring artificial intelligence is beginning to permeate our lives incrementally to everything from the tech powering of our smart smartphones to autonomous driving features on cars to the cool applications retail is used to surprise and delight consumers as a result its progress has been almost imperceptible moving on to generative ai excitement over this technology is substantial generative ai is steadfastly at the forefront of the technology trend and customers are on the lookout for pocs on the efficiencies that can be enabled by generative ai in application development application maintenance and deployment automation the full realization of generative ai benefits will take time and enterprises and society still have considerable challenges to address this includes managing the risk inherent in generative ai reskilling and upskilling the workforce and reimagining core business processes customers are looking at scaling out pocs and pilots by implementing necessary guardrails tcs has been making all the relevant investments required to participate in this opportunity Last year in August, we launched our AI dot cloud business unit, bringing together the power of cloud data and AI, including generative AI, into a dedicated group that builds on our strategic hyperscaler partnerships and deep relationships with our other major AI players. We launched AI dot cloud academy, which provides our associates with a powerful platform to train, get certified, share knowledge, accelerate deployment, and play in our unique AI experience zone. We have one of the largest pools of employees trained on artificial intelligence and generative competencies. The type and size of opportunities are evolving, with a noticeable shift towards larger, more strategic projects that encompass cloud and AI technologies. As assist use cases become augment, it will drive underlying initiatives on cloud and data. We are gradually seeing a few generative AI use cases moving to production. Generative AI's ability to create. new data and content is driving innovation across sectors we expect wider adoption in financial year 2025 with focus on seamless integration with current workflows with a human in the loop approach tcs has partnered with a large turbine manufacturer to identify duplicate parts in the system which are resulting in suppliers being charged different prices for the same item causing losses to the manufacturer tcs has leveraged ai to extract defined attributes from the information stored in pdf to create a data model to identify the duplicates that resulted in 15 million dollar annual saving for the manufacturer tcs is helping an enterprise in the material handling business to help service engineers with specific insights for equipment the machine learning based solution complemented with generative ai is directed to understand both structured and unstructured data around equipment manuals on enterprise data and equipment manuals and enterprise data and generate targeted instructions for service personnel to improve productivity and reduce the equipment service usage in the past cost and optimization benefits led to cloud adoption today cloud is not merely a technology to adopt but a strategy for business transformation and growth itself 
Cloud technologies enable us to overcome existing limitations of scale and bring partners, and bring partners, data, supply chains, and customers together and connected. TCS has been working closely with clients on fine-tuning their cloud strategies. The following examples demonstrate this partnership. OpenReach, UK's largest digital network provider and a part of the BT group, wants to implement a cloud-native microservices architecture. On a mission to roll out fiber connectivity across the country, OpenReach realized an overall enterprise rehaul was urgently required. TCS designed a modular and scalable orchestration engine and cloud which streamlines the entire fulfillment journey from order to billing. It provides real-time business insights while optimizing cost and reducing, a total, reducing the total time to market for the customers. United Airlines engaged TCS to revolutionize pilot pay with the intention of providing real-time gross pay information with improved pay accuracy and transparency to its 15,000 pilots. TCS was at the forefront of this collaborative approach, leading the transformation across design, architecture, and solution development. By embracing a data-driven approach with insights from United, we have truly built a future-ready, cloud-based scalable solution that seamlessly evolves alongside United's vision. Legal, legal and general retirement institutional, a leading provider in the UK's pension risk transfer market, partnered with TCS to modernize its customer administration platform with the power of cloud. Leveraging the contextual knowledge of the client's application landscape, its cloud, expert, its cloud expertise and partnership is a major hyperscaler, TCS helped the client build a highly available and resilient platform. The migration to public cloud has helped the client to enhance the capacity to onboard large PRT schemes quickly and meet the demands of the growing PRT market. The new architecture has also ensured increased availability of its customer administration platform with the ability to recover applications within 1.5 hours. With the new platform, TCS has laid the foundation for LGRA's future growth, continued success and scale. Fueled by cloud native capabilities and data intensive technologies like AI, GenAI, and IoT, enterprises can harness insights and apply skills and knowledge to spur innovation to the benefit of all, whether it's involving solving complex societal and climate challenges or creating new markets and revenue streams. We are very optimistic about the longer term opportunities from this trend. Moving on to our deal wins, TCV in Q4 was at a record high at 13.2 billion. This includes one mega deal we announced during the quarter. The BFSI TCV was $4.1 billion, while the TCV for our consumer business group was at $1.6 billion. The TCV of deal signed in North America stood at $5.7 billion. Our FI24 TCV was at $42.7 billion, a record growth of 25.2 year on year. We can now open the lines for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Yogesh Agarwal from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, on the TV, you guys mentioned that uh, there is only one large mega deal in the entire TCV, which is very strong. But still, the near-term growth outlook is not very clear. So I was just a bit confused. If a uh, large part of the deals are smaller in TCV, shouldn't the near-term outlook uh, improve? quite a bit. That is one. And secondly, just on the India business, Kriti, in the past, companies have regretted growing India after a while, margins, cash flows, etc. So you think the market has matured now and uh, it's not a risk going forward? Thanks. Thanks, Sir. So yes, first on the large deal, what we said is one, one mega deal, right? Uh, in the uh, deal pipeline, others are all uh, the so the deals of normal size we have every quarter. So it could be large deals, not a mega deal. Okay? 
and uh, from a overall uh, deal term perspective there is no change otherwise and uh, as we, we also since you mentioned the tv interview we said that like the number of deals that we've been winning in the last few quarters give us a confidence for a period of time the growth would return right so uh, so uh, i don't see there is a reason for a confusion or conflict there uh, coming to india uh, we do believe that we have to participate in the india growth story and uh, many of the large enterprises both in the public sector and private sector are embarking on new programs to leverage the technology uh, that is available today so we we are selective we want to ensure that we enter into the right deals but we believe there are enough right deals in the market today okay thank you so much sir thank you we have a next question from the line of sudhir kuntupalli from kotak mahindra amc please go ahead yeah uh, hi team uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers kriti uh, you reported uh, solid bills and you are indicating that uh, the demand visibility has improved over the previous three months i think on the uh, press meet uh, on the contrary one of our consulting heavy peers has indicated that demand situation further deteriorated over the previous three months so is it fair to assume that the problem of incremental deterioration over last three months is more pertinent to the discretionary strategy consulting kind of engagements and the rest of the portfolio remain largely resilient so definitely in a way so if you look at what we have been saying discretionary programs is not so exciting roi come under pressure so the roi is not uh, immediate or roi is not meeting you know, uh, so the threshold the customers are set for themselves they tend to pass those programs or delay those programs so to that extent there could be a uh, the lack of visibility on uh, near term but uh, as i said like since the like, tcv tcv has been quite high on the medium to long term we are more optimistic Sir, sir. Uh, second question to Samir. Uh, if we adjust for BSNL deal ramp up led margin dilution over the previous two quarters, uh, your net margins would have already been somewhere midway of your aspirational band of 26 to 28 percent. So my question is, have we peaked out in terms of margins, or you see further scope for uh, a margin upside? Uh, sure, so we. So first, we'll not uh, we'll look at uh, our margins as a portfolio basis, and we'll not split. Uh, Our customer or a geography out of it. Coming to your question on whether the margins have peaked out. Uh, in the as you know, uh, first quarter we take the impact of increment, so we would have a headwind coming up. But uh, I I think overall during the year we have, uh, in spite of strong headwinds coming through, yeah, and uh, in a challenging macro. We have been able to deliver consistent uh, good margin improvement in the last three quarters, almost 100 basis points in each of the quarters. We believe some of the uh, levers, like uh, the subcontractor cost, uh, was one of the levers which was helped significantly in FY24, might have bottomed out. But uh, uh, with our focus on disciplined execution, we. we believe still levers like pyramid pricing and utilization can help us and as the macro uh, risk recedes and growth uh, reverts back higher to its normal trajectory then uh, that can only help us accelerate this journey got it and lastly uh, ngs sir congratulations on a glorious career so privileged to listen to you and all the best for your future endeavors thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Ankur Rudra from J.P. Morgan. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, just the first question is on uh, you know the, the strong signings momentum you mentioned. How are you thinking about the conversion of this into revenues over the next uh, year or so? And how does it set you up for fiscal 25, given perhaps much easier comparable this time? Uh, I didn't get your second question, Uncle. Can you repeat, sir? Uh, the question was, you know, given the signing momentum has been very strong towards the end of the year. That question. Your comparables. Yeah, the second question is on, uh, you know, how the, uh, how do you think about the comparables? Given fiscal 24 growth was not very high, is it easier comparables this year? Uh, does that help you significantly? Yeah. Uh, uh, 
TCV definitely like uh, we've been also looking at uh, where is the revenue coming from uh, uncle like uh, we are quite comfortable on the conver- revenue conversion of the deals that we signed in the last 3 4 quarters and uh, they've been at the similar rate that we used to convert in the past as well so and uh, like we always say, been we've been saying in the last few quarters the uh, the the headwind has always been in those uh, projects that we signed quite some time ago and uh, which are of discretionary nature or where the clients can uh, uh, slow it down or pass for some time those are the ones providing the headwind what was the second question uh, bill f25 given uh, how f24 was bill f25 and out that down we uh, yeah uh, uncle like uh, we've been uh, on last quarter also we mentioned this uh give us seeing the tcv of uh, whatever we signed this quarter we believe the fi25 should be better than fi24 understood maybe if you can comment a bit more in terms of you know how do you think or where do you think clients are and where do you think the environment is in terms of spending cycle it's been almost i think 2 years now it's not slightly longer till we've seen you know revenue sort of decline 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 perhaps bottom out and begin to recover Uh, how do you feel about this spend cycle right now especially the mix of discretionary and non discretionary uh, and also if you can touch upon financial services and tnt verticals i i don't want to try to look at this way anko like clients want to do transformative work they want to embrace new technology we talked about uh, cloud adoption we talked about uh, enterprise cloud uh, like modernization we talked about generative AI. clients want to do all of them Uh, and the and also clients want they want to uh, conserve cost so these two are the drivers that uh, work as uh, they make them choose the appropriate projects where wherever they are trying to do on like uh, cost and optimization you see programs around vendor consolidation operating model transformation or sometimes application rationalization those kind of engagements are started and uh, and using the saving is uh, the saving is used to fund the programs that i talked about so i don't think that if you look at purely the tcv and look at the kind of projects you cannot say there is only one kind of project you would see a fair mix i would say maybe a 55% in terms of cost and optimization or 60% but remaining in terms of transformative engagement that i would probably put where it uh, the ball at but uh, at a grass level so can i add uh, in question to uh, what the cf said if the organization wants i'm sorry sir you're not audible yeah every organization wants to become an ai organization so there is a huge uh, amount of upskilling and transition that internally they are going through to train their own people on the impact that ai can have you know um, in terms of every one of their internal processes and uh, their planning process and what are the parameters that are important for their growth all of it so they are going through the ai transition themselves right and in addition to that you know the given the number of new technologies that are coming in this space the possibilities are opening up uh, as i I'll do that too in the press conference. The first phase of the defining the architecture in which they would like to develop these programs, which LLMs will be relevant for them, which one they want to keep it in house, which one they want to keep it uh, you know, in the public domain, what data that they have internally, what data they need to get it internally and measure. There are a lot of these, um, you know. strategic decisions are also at play so i think as far as the cost and optimization efficiency using ai for internal purposes they are all you know there is no depth of opportunities they are all happening today but on the strategic transformation programs the kind of work that they want to do um, they are calibrating it they want to solve all this internal issues strategic issues first assess the regulatory impacts before they want to progress for that thank you thank you for the color and yes and thank you so much for your you know guidance over the years that was my last question thank you thank you the next question is from the line of kavaljeet saluja from kotak please go ahead 
Hey, hi. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I have a couple of uh, questions. Uh, uh, first is uh, on uh, TCV and uh, the relative lack of uh, what I would say excitement about the near term, uh, 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 you know, uh, growth acceleration. Uh, you know, is there anything in the composition of uh, TCV which is uh, you know leading to this relative lack of enthusiasm? Anything you know which can throw some color on uh, uh, the renewal component or the ACV? Uh, you know, anything that can help us uh, understand uh, the dynamics of growth and uh, our TCV a little bit better. I called it. Uh, I won't call it a lack of excitement. We are quite happy with the TCV we signed. Uh, our caution comes from the also the headwinds that we face. Right? Like there are uh, we like the demand or the short term demand uh, still remains not very clear or uh, volatile. So that's a cautionary stand. Like once uh, we go through the quarter, probably we'll get get better understanding of uh, how the graph that we say overall net demand net demand. So we are quite happy with the TCV. The TCV is, uh, we've been able to convert the TCV into revenue very well. But what we have not been able to predict is the headwinds that come out because customers want to conserve cash and then stop some of those ongoing large programs. So that's the reason you see so the amount of caution in terms of predicting the revenue. And Kriti, anything uh, uh, you know in terms of renewals versus uh, new TCV? Because I saw a stream of announcements, but plenty of them were renewals. So, you know, how does that compare with a historical average? And if you can throw any, if you can add any insights on the ACV number, that will be useful as well. See, like we don't publish ACV number calls it, but from a renewal to a new revenue, actually there is no change. Actually, if at all, I would say that it's our uh, new revenue has been stronger. Okay. That's, uh, you know, heartening to hear. Uh, the second question is for Samir. Uh, Samir, uh, you know, any other levers through which you can juice up the margins? I understand there's some near-term headwind from uh, comp revision, uh, but uh, uh, just to understand uh, the perspective of, uh, of profitability and how it can improve, uh, any levers that can highlight, because at least from the face of it to us, it looks that uh, the engine is uh, running nice and, you know, in a very optimized way today. Yeah, so uh, the ones I called out, payment <coughs> pricing and utilization, uh, pyramid, productivity and utilization uh, definitely have a uh, further scope. And uh, we also believe that incremental margins will have to be contributed by pricing improvements. Right. The final question that I have is on the BSNL uh, deal, right? Uh, so there's a billion dollar of revenues uh, uh, that come in that zero period of 12 to 18 months. Uh, you know, is there subsequent work packets uh, uh, that will uh, flow in, or uh, you know, does this create, let's say, a revenue <laughs> vacuum uh, as you move into FI 2026? Um, uh, hi, this is NGS here. Uh, I think um, uh, see, we are currently we are focusing on installing the network across 100,000 towers. We have achieved about 10,000 towers as of date, and there are uh, further opportunities. For example, beyond holding out these 100,000 towers, we also have to upgrade a good number of them to 5G. That's another revenue stream that will come. And then uh, subsequently, you know, the uh, maintenance support and uh, aspects is uh, for the next uh, foreseeable future. That's another thing that is expected. Um, uh, in addition, there are also... Um, opportunities to increase the number of towers that uh, BSNL will deploy because uh, clearly they are focused on uh, what they call a saturation size, which essentially means rolling out new towers in rural areas where uh, hitherto even a mobile network doesn't exist. Yeah. So there are clearly some more opportunities that will come uh, from the BSNL. Um, but Clearly, you know, this is a mission critical project, uh, very complex, highly uh, integrated and indigenously developed. The opportunities to take it to market for uh, with other operators and other things is an opportunity that we are calibrating. Got it. Fantastic. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Surendra Goyal from Citigroup. Please go ahead. 
Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am just trying to understand your community better. You have sequential growth in Q4. You are saying that visibility has gotten better. Do you see TCV trends are good and mostly regular size deals? And June and September are seasonally strong as well, based on what we have seen over the years. So why are you not willing to call out growth in the coming quarters? Uh, is there a leakage in the existing big business? A concern enough to hold you back despite so many positives? Any clarity would really be helpful. Yeah. Say there are two things. One, we have never given guidance. Two, as I told, whatever question, answer I gave to cover it, like there is certain amount of unpredictability in terms of uh, our customers' willingness to uh, or readiness to uh, cut the discretionary uh, work that they are doing, or well, based on the return on investment they are uh, seeing. And it is also a factor of how they see the economy panning out or how what they should be ready for. So if there is a greater confidence on the their overall business growth, you would see them uh, yeah, yeah, now at least embarking upon more discretionary projects or not passing the projects. So it's a question of the overall economic sentiments our customers are in. That's the reason that we are not uh, sounding very optimistic. And are there uh, we are, actually, we are not being cautious here. It's not, I'm not, a, we are being cautious here because of these reasons. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah. And are there the particular verticals where you see the reprioritization happening more commonly compared to the rest of the business? No, it comes from like their individual perception. On see, there are some programs that we have seen, the number of incremental uh, enhancements are supposed to be done. But when they see the uh, new enhancements not going to yield greater value, they don't do those enhancements. They stop at wherever, whatever, you, after the initial set of uh, modernization. So or there are, we have seen programs where uh, they have signed up to initially a very high SLA, but they realize that uh, given the current environment, that kind of SLA is not required. So then you have a lesser number of uh, associates handling the same program with a reduced SLA. So you see a mix of, uh, and there was one instance where the customer sold off of uh, that business to somebody else or they got out of that business. So they ran down the people in that uh, program. So, and some of these decisions happen at a very short notice. So this is broadly the spectrum we are seeing. And uh, just a, a housekeeping question, are, are any deals which get canceled either because of customers selling off a business or any other reason? What you report, is that a net number or just a gross number? No, like, no, what is a net number or what, what is no, no, what I'm saying? See, if you had signed a deal six months back and then the deal got cancelled, would this quarter be net of that cancellation or the cancellation are not accounted for? Now, TCV is only the what we sign new in a given quarter. Understood. Thanks. And yes, uh, thank you for all your insights over the years and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> we have our next question from the line of Gaurav Rathiriya from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just wanted to get a little bit better trends on BFSI. You did talk about insurance vertical uh, growing during the quarter across uh, geographies. If you could lay out in terms of outlook within BFSI of subsectors, what's going to grow and where the visibility is higher, where visibility is still not there, that would be very helpful. Um, hi, Gaurav. This is NGS here. I think um, see, overall, um, our engagement with our customers in the BFSI segment has been uh, terrific and um, very good partnership. That led to about 4.5 billion worth of uh, TCV during the quarter. Um, insurance is doing well. Capital markets is uh, just uh, now almost every stock market is doing well. So there are uh, there are increasing uh, opportunities that are coming, but large, largely in uh, putting controls, risk, and uh, safety measures as opposed to trading systems or uh, trading settlement systems because they're all working, they're all scaling. 
and uh, they don't want to touch it and they have invested a lot on the algo trading everything um, on the retail banking side clearly payments and wealth management are two significant areas where we have customers wanting to try out new technologies and uh, especially your portfolio management portfolio optimization and uh, using gen ai to rebalance and then uh, um, reducing uh, in a way that increasing their own productivity and uh, giving the agility to their customers is something that we are seeing and uh, identifying arbitrage opportunities on the fly these are all cases that um, people are trying it out and um, there are opportunities in payment specifically and wealth management on the retail segment market infrastructure side you know, there are a uh, uh, good number of programs are uh, in that pipeline as you know we signed up the deal with uh, asx australian stock exchange and we implemented one of the most complex commodity systems for mcx and we continue to engage with um, you know customers of ours like london clearing house and uh, uh, other firms um, large market infrastructure programs in payments payments modernizations and almost every market they are considering to implement something like a upi faster payments instant payments these are all discussions that are going on but these are all long term projects so deal cycles are expected to be uh, longer i hope that uh, gives you a perspective thank you for the very comprehensive answer uh, just a follow up on this where are you seeing the unexpected ramp downs or you know uh behavior of client decision making within these segments uh, and uh any likelihood of that kind of uh you know continuing i mean are you expecting this to continue in the current quarter as well i in think you know, uh, i i can't really you know uh, pinpoint something such that like you know if you take our uh, bfsa segment for example most of our customers they are all long term strategic customers for us we have enjoyed a, a phenomenal relationship and partnership with all of them so we sign deals and they commit deals to uh, work with us but then at the same time they come back and then say that look yes i signed this deal and then i want to uh, defer this for about a quarter uh, even though contractually they may not have that option we remain flexible with them and then we have to accommodate them in the Uh, interest of the long term relationship and culturally we are like that right so from that perspective you know uh, we see some volatility in decisions uh, because for example if they face a headwind they come back and then talk to us and then say that look can you execute this program in terms of in terms of 12 months can you do it over 18 months or 24 months and such things happen then you know it's an unplanned uh, uh, you know let's say distribution of work that we need to manage and customers love us for that right so i think we will continue to operate in that fashion and it is that volatility which we are not able to predict and at the same time today there are so many startups coming in ai some of them they say that look maybe i want to invest in that startup rather than building it myself why i wanted to build it but today i want to see what the the conceptually what they are coming up with is interesting maybe i will invest in them and then accelerate their journey and adopt that technology So these are all the volatility that we see in the marketplace, uh, for which you know we will have to be respectful of their thoughts and decisions, and and uh, accordingly align ourselves to this. And that's the volatility which I am not able to predict, and I am not able to communicate it. We only echo what we see and what we hear from our customers to all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, last question uh, for Samir uh, on the comfort band of 26 to 28 percent. You did talk about pricing to be one of the levers that will be required to sustain the margin in that. Uh, in the current environment, do you expect this to play out in the coming quarters based on the kind of deals that you have signed, or is it more of a, a factor that could be? you know at play only when the discretionary spend were to return back thank you no no so we we uh, we, uh, we believe that incremental margin uh, will have to be contributed by pricing improvement that need not be through an immediate pricing increase but will need to be uh, structure uh, will need to work out structurally and uh, uh, towards that 
it would be a combination of various factors. Uh, overall, portfolio-based pricing increasing, uh, renewals uh, getting priced in at a higher price, or uh, when the renewals happen, uh, asking for a price increase, or uh, the, the overall new uh, deals which come in uh, get factored at a higher price. So it, uh, I wouldn't expect it in one quarter or uh, we go and ask for a price increase to a customer and we would get it. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Kumar Rakesh from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Hi, good evening. Thank you for taking my question. My first question was for Sameer. So we are exiting this year closer to 26% on the margin side. Uh, so through the next year, FI25, through the quarters, should we expect a quarterly movement of margin similar to what we saw this year? Or there was some difference in the trajectory which we saw, and we should we should build it accordingly. I think uh, one thing for sure is, like it happens in every year, we will take the uh, impact of increments, uh, the headwinds, uh, largest headwinds coming in in Q1, and then we claw back uh, uh, on the margins uh, as we go through the year, and we would expect a similar trajectory to happen. Got it. Um, and yeah, there has already been a lot of question around the deal TCV, ACV, and the revenue conversion. Additionally, Kiti, you also spoke about in the last quarter about the pent-up demand in the retail segment this quarter. You have spoken about pent-up demand to be there in BFS. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you see that panning out in the context where you have caution in the near term, while you are also talking about there is a pent-up demand? What do you think that would be the catalyst that you would be looking at where these pent up demand eventually starts translating into revenue and gives you more better visibility on demand and comfort as well? But like, uh, to me, like once the customers are comfortable about their demand environment, about their market, or for instance, like see insurance today, uh, they look at uh, their long term uh, growth to be uh, say for manufacturing, we find there is a lot of activity. So the, in those sectors, we find there is an investment happening. So it is a factor of those individual businesses, like uh, uh, capital markets has done reasonably well this quarter. Like we found that spend happening in the regulatory sector, the risk and the compliance. So it depends on the individual customer. And wherever they see that there is a uh, greater confidence of their business, you would see the pent up demand also being satisfied. And uh, as long again, it's also it's a factor of what is the return on investment uh, that uh, particular investment will uh, give them. So it's a more a factor of the individual business and the client's outlook. Got it. So, in any of the verticals or pockets, have you already started seeing this pent up demand starting to? I won't call it pent up demand, but as I spoke in my original commentary, uh, consumer business for uh, now we have started seeing green shoots uh, in pockets. Like uh, even this quarter, we found uh, airlines uh, transportation doing very well. So you would see pockets in each of these verticals. I won't say in any given vertical, you may not have all sub verticals return to growth part, but there will be some sub verticals. That would uh, return to growth part, as I said, this quarter insurance grew well, uh, airlines and uh, transportation grew well, uh, manufacturing, by and large, most of the segments in manufacturing grew well. So this is what we are seeing. Perfect. That's very helpful. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, operator. Uh, so you're not audible. Thank you, operator. We are very pleased with our financial year 2024 performance, growing at 3.4% in constant currency amidst the macro uncertainty prevailing in the major markets. Our Q4 revenue grew 3.5% in rupee terms and 2.2% in constant currency terms. Deal momentum continued to be very strong in Q4 with our order book at 13.2 billion for the quarter and 42.7 billion for the full year. Our Q4 operating margins improved to 26% and expansion of 100 bits sequentially. 
Our net margin in Q4 stood at 20.3%. Our LTM attrition in IT services fell further to 12.5%. We continue to deliver resilient results, winning market share and balancing growth with profitability. We have an exceptional leadership team and an extremely dedicated workforce. It has been every TCSL's hard work during the year which fueled our collective achievements, and I would like to thank each one of them for their contribution to the company's success. With that, we wrap up our call for today. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, members of the management. On behalf of TCS, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.